Prime Minister Scott King was there. Mm. You know, the, one of the reasons that Aboriginal Australians achieved whatever success in terms of liberation is they modeled it off the United States. They had a black power movement. They had a Black Panther Party there. They had freedom yes. rights. They had sit ins. Yes. So yes. what we need to do is look at our struggle from a global perspective. Yeah. And again, Garvey was, in, was, was clear on that. Garvey was the first black person that I know of reading his writings, philosophy and opinions, which is now being translated by my daughter's mother into French, by the way. Julius Garvey gave us the permission to do that. But well, Garvey was the first person I know of to talk about the tens of millions of black people in India. Yeah. This is in the 1920s. So Garvey really understood when you consider the time in which he lived. Mm -hmm. And he was a true visionary. Who is the next question? So, 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 so I, I, I got to say something on what he just said. It's important because we got folks who have done extensive research to see how Garvey was influenced. And a lot of the places that he could not go to, a lot of the brothers, particularly Haiti, a lot of brothers and sisters schooled Garvey. So even before Garvey got what he got, y'all hear what I'm saying now? Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important for us to really respect what we have amongst us so instead of and then and then and then uh, you know who used to come James to, and then to you and I meetings? Right. Ho Chi Minh. Right. Yes, sir. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's really important for us to Asia really for Asia, do, Africa for Africa. Do, do, our, do our research mm -hmm. because uh, Brother Raymond, and you'll see him in uh, you'll see his PowerPoint presentation, uh, Renoko. He's the, the new ambassador of Haiti. Good. And he works with Michael Duncan in Queens. And he's done some detailed research. On, on how the hate, the government, the Constitution, was specifically influential to the government of the UNIA. Mm -hmm. Now, we always talk about, well, how can the UNIA be a government? But we don't even understand that the most powerful Constitution, the Haitian one, was the most powerful Constitution we ever had. Mm -hmm. And look at the hell that Haiti is catching right now. Mm -hmm. Look at what's going on with the island. That's how I'm going to say it. I'm not going to say another country, because it's really the island. Right, right, right. You see, you gotta, you gotta really understand. That's important, okay? But, and, you know, you gotta connect those things, because it's not just the personalities. And don't get me wrong, I love Garvey. But Garvey recognized some things and tied into those who came before him. And even though he couldn't get to certain places, he talked to a lot of people who came from those places. And they taught, and that's important. And that's why it's so important, the information that Renoko is bringing us. Because if you haven't gone there, now you already know something about someplace. Y'all right. hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It's very important. I know you had your hand up here for a while. Yeah. Where? I am. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Good, uh, the sisters made me miss you. <laughs> <laughs> and those are some fine sisters. <laughs> I'm glad the lights were off when I did my presentation. I got you, I never would have been able to concentrate. <laughs> I got you, man. I, um, I visited um, Ethiopia in 2007, and one of the things that surprised me were the, the white images of Christ. Um, and I've heard that since that time, it's even gotten worse mm. in terms of a lot of churches, you know, uh, bringing these images into the country mm -hmm. and, and spreading them. I wanted to know what was your experience. I went to Ethiopia for the first time in 2004, and then I just went back a month ago. And uh, yeah, we were disappointed, but I had seen it before, and so I wasn't shocked to see it again. I think a lot of these images of European-looking angels and Jesus and all of that are relatively new. Yes. And I think that's the influence of missionaries and people bringing money over there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, but um, you can say that about Ethiopia, and yeah, I was disappointed. But if you want to see white Jesus, go to Ghana. Yeah. Ooh, I heard. Go to Haiti. Yeah. Go to I Canada. heard. Yeah. Go down the street. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. 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 And then people say it yeah. don't matter. Let me, let me come back over here. Yeah. Right. Right. My question is on uh, old Greece, um, Africans in the early Greece. What about? Was, um, I heard a lecture, I think it was by Evan Van Serve. And I think well, he said that the uh, founder of Athens was an African. In, in in Greek mythology, yeah. Oh, not in mythology. In myth mythological. Okay. You have prominent Africans in Greek mythology. Like the most significant African that I know of is Memnon. Memnon fought in the, according to the mythological traditions, he fought in the Trojan War alongside the Trojans, and he was killed by Achilles. 
And you have people like Medea, who I mentioned earlier, who was a sorceress, who gave Jason, um, who made it easy for Jason to steal the golden fleece. Mm. She gave her father a potion and put him to sleep. Mm. And when Jason got far enough away from Coltis where the fleece were, he abandoned Medea. And you have Circe. And then you have the fact that many of the Greek gods are patterned after those that came from the Nile Valley. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say again that most of our history has not been written. And that is amazing to me, the things that we come across on a regular basis that African people did that are basically left out of the history books. Okay. Um, I'll ask you about this, the plantations down south. I came off the Jane River, so coming all the way up from the slave trail from the Chesapeake Bay to Richmond. How can I get you to come and take that tour, or would you like to take the tour, or would you like to put it, come and let me ride with you and show you what, I could even show you the places where Nat Turner lived, or I could show you where the Baker's Rebellion, or show you where the first ship stopped in Jamestown and the slave black people was on that ship. Mm. I could show you where, um, on one plantation called the Chippewa Plantation, where a whole lot of the, the um, what I'm going to say, the things that was invented to make things easier for us, you still got them there showing you that black people did make the important. See, uh, you, 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 you rolled something up going south, and I want to let y'all know right now, right now, 5,000 acres of land in Calhoun Falls, South Carolina, our Minister of Labor and Industries is there, and they're looking for people that want to come there to work, and it's owned by black people. See, I, and I love the fact of going south, don't get me wrong, brother, but I, we've been saying this, this is not the first time, I know some of y'all might have heard it the first time, but I'm asking, and I'm letting you know, if you really gain this 5,000 acres of land owned by the Shrine of the Black Madonna in Calhoun Falls, South Carolina, and it's been proven that 51,000 years ago, that's where our ancestors came. Mm -hmm. And that land is right there now looking for black people that are serious about coming to work, okay, to work, mm -hmm. okay? And most of the people around there are impoverished, just like Africa. Mm -hmm. you, you know, and I say that because I always hear us about South, and I'm going back South. Mm -hmm. I'm getting ready to move on three acres of land in, in, in South Carolina. Not that land, but some other land. So I understand going South, but once you go South, you have to understand that the same mentality that existed, that killed those nine folks the other day, is there. So you got to go with a community and you got to go strong. Mm -hmm. you, you know, let's be clear. Mm -hmm. The South is still the South. And, and, and hold on, brother, now, now, we can talk. Hold on, brother, hold on, let me get these questions. Come on in the back. Let me say everybody before we go any further. further. Hold on, we can stand yeah. off. Let's see how many questions there are. Yeah, yeah, we got Thank several you. in the back. Let me see how many there are. Raise your hand. That's my, by the way, we're go, that's Marvel Berry's son that just rolled up. And, and she knows, you know, she, he knows your mother who else too. One question. Come on with your question. I see another question. Who else has a question? Right. All right. I'll try to be brief. Thank Come on. Right with you. Far South Carolina. Far South Carolina, we know what's happening. It's tragic. Um, what should black churches do? What should black people in the, in the community do to protect ourselves? I just want, I want you to speak to that. I mean, they will, if you're going to continue to see us get knocked off right. until we understand self-determination and protection. That's and right. what I was talking about was not just going to South Carolina just to live. I mean, you could go build, live. You can train there. But see, a lot of us like to romanticize. This is real. That gun that that 21-year-old white boy pulled out was empty and reloaded. Twice. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You understand? So we cannot, we, you know, it's very important for us to recognize you got to be prepared to defend yourself. At all times. But we're not even thinking in terms, we're constantly trying to think about asking the system to address the situation. Right. It's not going to happen. True. True. The very system is also killing you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we got to really think about no what we're talking about when we talk about organizing. And with organizing, there's several things that go with that. And security is one of them. Yes, sir. Okay? You can't just grow food and think you that go. you're going to be all right. You, know? you can't just go to land and think that you're going to be cool and not build a home. You got to start thinking about really nation building. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
And see, we think we romanticize about that. That's important for us to, to hear. Nation building, you got to know how to build and protect it and grow your family. Mm -hmm. That's nation building. So anyway, uh, I want to get to all the questions in with Renoco because I, I said. Real quick, though. We keep on talking about building something, but y'all don't realize what we control. I don't know if you know we don't control said. nothing, brother. Really, we control yet. America. Yes, we do. No, okay, brother. That's, that's a good opinion. Yes, but we, we I, I, I disagree. I disagree. We wouldn't be paying rent. All of it's very, very important. I think that one of the things that we do, there's so much to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that sometimes yeah. we ask questions yeah. that are complex, and we want simple, direct, cut and dry answers. Amen. And that's not going to happen. <laughs> There are no silver bullets. Mm -hmm. I've been saying that we need to do very, very basic things. Spend money with each other. Mm -hmm. Join an organization. Yes. Have a black mate. Yes. Have a God that looks like you. Yes. I think African liberation is not complicated. It's a matter of execution. Yes. I had a question about uh, ancient Sumer. Mm -hmm. uh, I read that the, the name Sumer translates to the black-headed people. Can you clear up what, what exactly that that meant, and also, and that's two other parts of it. Uh, what was the extent of the African role in ancient Sumer, and was there a connection between Sumer and ancient King? Those are good questions. Sumer, S-U-M-E-R, was the civilization, uh, the, the classical civilization of ancient Iraq. Mm -hmm. And it occupied the area uh, just north of the Persian Gulf in Iraq, between the Tigris and the Euphrates River the first great civilization of Southwest Asia. The Sumerians call themselves the black-headed people. Mm -hmm. And again, I don't know if Sumer was an African civilization or it was a civilization in which Africans were an elite element. But they were important because they were early, uh, they made early advances in pharmacy, in mathematics, in astronomy, and literature. Mm -hmm. And they were wiped out around the same time that the Hiskos invaded Egypt mm -hmm. around 1700 or so. Mm -hmm. uh, Chancellor Williams has a, an epigraph in the book Destruction of Black Civilizations, and I think it goes, what became of the black people of Sumer, the traveler asked the old man. Mm -hmm. The ancient mm -hmm. records, and I'm yeah. paraphrasing mm -hmm. now, say that the Sumerians were black. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And ah, the old man sighed, they lost their history and they, they died. Mm -hmm. And there is a section on the Sumerians in the book on Asia, and another section on Sumer in the um, uh, the new book on Van Turk. 